Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I am going to be unhauling mostly books from my childhood which might make it sound like this video is going to be quite sad but actually I have been wanting to do this for quite a while. I mean at least since I moved house around six months ago. I actually feel like I should start this video by giving a little bit of context to how this situation came around. So so around 10 or 11 years ago, when I moved home from uni, I moved into this house. <laughs> well, not this house where I am now, but my previous house, I moved in there. And initially my plan was to stay there for a couple of years or, you know, I had this vision in my mind that I was gonna buy my own house by the time that I was like 25, which was pretty optimistic of me. Obviously that didn't happen, but it meant that a lot of the stuff that moved with me when I cleared out my childhood bedroom was stuck in the loft for well yeah what ended up being 10 years. So when I moved in with my partner around six months ago I knew that at some point I was going to have to clear out the attic at my old house. My old house is actually owned by my mum. I don't think I've ever talked about that on my channel but my mum was my landlord and she's now selling that house. So over the past few months we've been gradually clearing it out and yeah the other weekend I decided to go back back and finally clear through my childhood books which wasn't as emotional as I thought it would be. I know that when I first moved into that house I did not want to get rid of any of my books so that's how most of them ended up going into storage but I don't really feel that attached now to physical books. I feel like I get attached to stories but I'm not that fussed about owning books physically because I read mostly on my Kindle and I know that there's a lot of books that I can borrow from the library. If anyone's wondering what's going to be happening to all of these books, most of them are going to go to the charity shop or they're going to be donated and then a few are going to my niece because she mentioned that she's interested in some of these series and she's actually a similar age to what I was when I read some of these books for the first time. So yeah I think that's everything that I wanted to say in this intro. I am gonna skip back in time now to me sorting through all of the books and then I'll catch up with you at the end of the video to go through the books that I ended up keeping. Okay so so I've started sorting through all of my books to try and decide which ones I want to keep and which I want to donate and take up to the charity shop. I do have a box here <laughs> which I'm going to fill with any books that I do decide to keep. I was thinking I might get rid of my Georgia Nicholson series because I do have all of the hardbacks, especially of the later books in the series, and they're in pretty decent condition. I actually reread this series, I think it was about a year ago or possibly two years ago. I listened to the audiobooks on Scribd and they gave me a lot of nostalgia but they haven't aged very well so I'm thinking I might get rid of these and then if I do ever want to revisit the series I can always listen to the audiobooks. I need to double check with my partner but I'm also thinking I might get rid of some of my copies of The Edge Chronicles. This was one of my favourite series when I was a kid. I always liked the map if I can find it. Maybe it's in the hardback. Yeah, so I always really loved <laughs> the map of this series and I loved the characters, I loved the world, but realistically I don't think I'm ever going to reread this series and if I do, my partner actually already owns the book, so I'm going to double check which ones he has and if it's worth keeping any of my copies. I've just realised that there's actually another box <laughs> of books in the wardrobe, so I need to get this out as well because I also have the entire Gossip Girl series and to be fair these aren't in the best condition so I don't know whether these are even worth donating but again I know I'm probably never going to reread this series even though they were so addictive when I read them and I really liked the TV show as well so if I ever want to revisit <laughs> this story then I probably would just watch the TV show. There's actually two boxes hiding in the wardrobe but so something tells me this is going to take a lot longer to sort through than I originally thought. <laughs> this is actually in pretty decent condition <laughs> considering it's been hiding in my loft for the last 10 years but I do have in here somewhere 
all of the Alex Ryder books by Anthony Horowitz, which was one of my favourite series when I was growing up. But I really liked the recent TV adaptation as well, which was actually based on the second book, Point Blank. They did do a movie, I think, which was an adaptation of Stormbreaker, the first book, but it wasn't very good <laughs> from what I remember. So part of me wants to keep this series for the nostalgia. I don't know whether I would ever reread it though, and I don't think I ever actually finished the series. I'm gonna see if I can find the other books in here. Okay, so I think I found all of the books in this series. I know that Snakehead was the last one that I bought, which is why it's in hardback <laughs> and the rest are in paperback. This came out, I think, I can't remember when it came out. Was it 2007? So I would have been 16. And I think after that point, I realised that I wasn't interested in this series anymore. I'm fairly confident that there were a few more books published in a series after Snakehead. I might be wrong, let me know <laughs> in the comments, but considering I was around 14, I think, when I read the first book, by the time that Snakehead came out, I can remember I didn't enjoy this as much, but possibly that's just because I was aging out of the series, so it's kind of understandable. But yeah, because these are in pretty good condition, I think I am going to donate these, and hopefully someone will enjoy them <laughs> as much as I enjoyed them back when I was a teenager. Next up, we have some Darren Shan books, and straight away, I can tell you for definite, I'm going to be getting rid of this series. I can't even remember what it's called. The Demon Archer series, I think, is the name <laughs> of the series, but I can remember I did not like <laughs> this series. I never finished it. I read these first five books. I don't know if there's any more hiding somewhere, but I remember reading the first few books, and I didn't like it couldn't even tell you <laughs> what it was about. So these are definitely going to go to the charity shop. I'm actually really tempted to keep my Darren Shan books. They're not in the best condition. I think you can possibly tell the worst on that edition. These were up in the loft and I think they've got a little bit water damage. That one looks okay, actually, but I loved this series so much. It's about a main character called Darren who goes to this circus in his hometown in the first book and he, through a series of events, ends up being turned into a half vampire and it gets quite political, actually, especially in the later books. I think the Vampire Rights trilogy was possibly my favourite because it featured a series of trials and I always love that trope but yeah I am tempted to keep these even though I hated the ending. I hated the ending of this series obviously I won't go into spoilers even though this is a very old series but I hated the last book and the way that things wrapped up. So yeah, now that I'm talking about it, maybe I should get rid of these, but also I kind of want to keep them just for the nostalgia. I think if it were a matching set, I'd be really tempted to keep my copies of The Princess Diaries, but as you can see, I did not care about having matching books <laughs> when I was a teenager, and I read these to death. They're still not in bad condition, actually, if I give them a bit of a clean but yeah, I think it's time to say goodbye to these. Possibly a controversial opinion, but I actually preferred All American Girl to The Princess Diaries, and I think it's because, if I'm remembering correctly, this actually has a main character called Sam, and I just thought that was really cool because that's my name. <laughs> Does anyone else remember this series by Kate Tiernan? I think is how you pronounce the author's name. This was one of my favourite series when I was a kid, and I can remember I used to love the way that the spines <laughs> look together and I really liked the covers as well but this is about a 16 or 17 year old girl who learns that she's a witch and it's yeah very coming of age I can just remember really really loving it but then I didn't like this last book as much my cousin got me into this because she loved it as well so yeah I've got a lot of memories attached to this series but <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this video. I am going to get rid of the series because I don't think I would enjoy it that much if I were to ever 
reread it. This was another of my favourite series that my cousin got me into. It's called Roswell High. And they actually turned this into a TV show. I don't know whether the TV show was based on the books or whether they bought out the books because of the TV show. But I can remember I loved this series. It goes in a very different direction to the TV show. But I also remember really liking the TV show. And I can remember buying these one by one. I think I got them on eBay because I don't think they sold them in bookshops from what I can remember. But yeah, I really love this series and it was one of the first TV shows that Katherine Heigl was in as well. You can probably see her better on that cover. I don't think I ever actually owned this entire series completed. This is obviously the Chronicles of Narnia and I used to reread these books over and over again because when I was in middle school, I think it was, we had to have a book to read during like morning registration. And I reread <laughs> The Chronicles of Narnia over and over again. I think the second book was my favorite. And then I also liked Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which I don't think I actually own. Either that or it's possibly got lost. But yeah, I can remember really liking the second book and then the rest I didn't really enjoy as much. I think I am going to donate these because it's not a completed series and if I ever do fancy rereading this then I'll probably just listen to the audiobooks but yeah this was one of my favourite series when I was growing up. I know that it's got some pretty problematic content which hasn't aged well which is probably why I'm not that fussed about ever rereading this series because I'd rather remember it how I enjoyed it back when I was a kid. Sometimes I like rereading books as an adult especially childhood favourites because I like to read them critically but I think with this series I'd rather just leave it in the past. <laughs> These Terry Pratchett books are actually in really good condition so I think I'm gonna take these to the charity shop. I can't remember if I actually read them. I'm pretty sure I started The Colour of Magic and couldn't get into it but actually I've since heard that even though this is the first Discworld novel it's not the book that most people recommend starting with so that's possibly why I didn't like it. <laughs> Battle Royale by Koshun Takami I think is how you pronounce the author's name was one of my favourite books when I was 17 or 18 and I actually bought this edition after I watched the film and I loved the film but I preferred the book as is usually the way. This one has has a little bit of damage to the corner up here but I think I am going to keep this edition because I can see myself rereading this at some point. I really liked the story. It's very graphic and very gruesome but it's very similar to The Hunger Games. I actually read this before The Hunger Games and I think this came out before The Hunger Games as well and people have questioned whether Suzanne Collins took inspiration from this book but yeah I think I am going to keep this one. I knew I had copies <laughs> of these somewhere so next up we have Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice and Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice which is the second book is it? No it's actually the third book in the Vampire Chronicles. I've never seen the movie with Brad Pitt but I remember really liking this first book. I don't think it's a series that I'd ever reread. I mean, I only read the first book, but I think it's a pretty long series. Nikki French are actually still publishing books today, and I can remember loving these books when I read them. I think my mum got me these four for either my birthday or Christmas, and I think this was my first foray into the thriller genre. I know that they turned Killing Me Softly into a TV show. I think it was this one that they turned into a TV show or a movie with David Tennant. I think it was a TV show. I don't know why I said movie, <laughs> but I can remember I loved all of these books. I just found another Nikki French book and now I'm questioning myself because I wonder if this was actually 
the TV show that had David Tennant in, but I'm pretty sure that this one was adapted as well. I'd really like to read some more of Nikki French's books because I know that one of their series has really good reviews. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, these were really good psychological thrillers that I read, obviously, back then. I don't know if I'd still like them now, but I would like to check out some of their more recent stuff. Okay, so we've made some really good progress <laughs> this afternoon, and the only books I really have left are random books in series and also adult fiction that I was reading when I was trying to get into adult fiction and move away from YA. So yeah, I'm really happy with how much progress <laughs> we've made this afternoon. I'm feeling really productive. I've got a whole box over here with books I'm going to keep. And then behind me, I've got stacks and stacks of books that are going to go to the charity shop or to be donated. So I have moved to a chair because I was getting pins and needles sat on the floor, but I wanted to go through some of the books that I did decide to keep. But annoyingly, I filmed a few clips on the day where I was talking to camera, but because I was using my phone, I think I was accidentally covering the microphone or something because the audio on those clips is just unusable. So we're going to go through them now. The first two books that I wanted to talk about were The Silmarillion and The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I decided I should probably keep keep these because they're my dad's copies and I should probably check with him before I decide to get rid of these but this is the copy of The Hobbit that I read when I was a kid and then I tried to read The Silmarillion but this is basically a textbook and I didn't want to read it when I was 14 so maybe I should give it another go but I know that this is quite dense and I'm not sure I want to read that even now. <laughs> Next up, we have a couple of Stephen King books. So The Shining, which I think was one of the first books that I read by Stephen King. I actually have the first Stephen King book that I read <laughs> right here. So this is Four Past Midnight, which is a collection of short stories. And the whole concept behind them is that they get scarier the further that you get into them. Them. So the first story is meant to keep you up until one past midnight and then the last story is meant to keep you up until four past midnight but I really liked these short stories and I would like to reread them because yeah like I said these were the first stories that I read by Stephen King and from there I think I read The Shining and Carrie and possibly Pet Cemetery. then I read The Dark Tower series and then I wanted to read all of the books that are connected to The Dark Tower series like Salem's Lot and things like that so yeah this was my entryway to Stephen King's books and I need to reread them before I recommend them but yeah for anyone who's interested in I thought this was a good place to start with Stephen King when I was like 15 or 16 but obviously I don't know if I would like them today. I did decide to keep Interview with the Vampire and Queen of the Damned but I might still get rid of these. I think in my head I had this idea of doing a reading vlog where I compare an older vampire story to a more modern vampire story because I feel like vampires are becoming popular again and I have a few on my TBR so that was an idea that I had but I don't know if I'm ever gonna do it so I might still donate these. I think I mentioned I was keeping these in the video but we do have here my Darren Shan books and also Battle Royale by Koshun Takami. I would also really like to rewatch this movie. I have no interest in re-watching this movie because it was awful. <laughs> then I did also decide to keep my Philip Pullman books because I have his Dark Materials somewhere <laughs> on my bookshelves and I wanted these to go with them. These are in pretty good condition. I actually really liked this series. I never hear anyone talk about it, but it's set in Victorian London, I think. It's called the Sally Lockhart series, and they adapted this into a TV show or a movie. I think it was a TV show with Billy Piper, 
which I can't remember liking <laughs> too much, but I really liked this series. I really like books that set during Victorian times. Maybe one day I will reread this series. I reread His Dark Materials a few years ago and really enjoyed that. I really like these covers as well. I think that's everything that I wanted to go through in this video. I should have said actually that these weren't all of my childhood favourites. Some of my favourite books from when I was a kid moved with me six months ago because they were already out on my bookshelves. These were just the books that were up in the attic. But yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments some of your favourite childhood books. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye!